Hello and welcome to this video and on this video I'm going to be ranking the albums by Gentle Giant from worst to best. This uh, video follows on from an interview I did with the progmeister himself Steve Gould where we discussed the discography of um, Gentle Giant and we discussed trying to work out which is their best album which of course is an impossible task because um, in the mid 70s Gentle Giant had a run of albums that were all works of geniuses their masterpieces and it's really virtually impossible to pick between those albums um, for those of you who don't know who Gentle Giant are and I'm assuming anybody watching this video will but they are a prog band formed in 1970 um, they uh, dissolved in 1980. They occupy the classic period of the 70s and they sort of document that journey from the development of progressive rock and on their first album, self-titled album, Gentle Giant in 1970s, they are pioneers of prog. They are way past many of the other prog bands on the scene at that time through the sort of um, height of prog and then to the sort of collapse of prog and, and reinvention of prog towards the end of the late 70s they document that um and they document that from a really interesting point of view for because for me gentle giant are progs prog band whatever prog does they do times 10 and they they are sort of best described as uh extremely virtuoso extremely complex medieval funk band that's the best way i could describe gentle giant but i'm pretty sure anybody watching this video you know what they sound like so i'm not going to waste time describing them anymore i'm going to kick straight into my ranking which i felt more confident of doing after chatting to uh, steve gould and really talking through each album and then i went away and i thought i think now i do have a, a reasonable ranking of the gentle giant albums um, part of this is personal, it's my personal taste, because when you're dealing with masterpieces, it's usually the ones that you like the best for personal reasons. But I'm hoping anybody coming to the band, this will be a good place to start to know what to get first and um, how the discography lays out and the good points of the great albums and the bad points of the not so great albums. And of course, we start right at the bottom. There's 10 albums, right at the bottom at number 10. We have the worst album, which is Giant for a Day. And Giant for a Day, I think, came out around about 77, 78. I'm actually not too sure. Uh, um, Giant for the Day is them almost reacting to the changes in the markets um, in terms of popular music. They are trying to become more commercial. But Gentle Giant's version of commercial is utterly bizarre. It's They've gone from their signature complex interlocking sound to a sort of raw rock and roll sound it's badly produced it's badly recorded it's badly thought out um gentle giant just aren't a punk band and they're they are hamstrung when they try and go towards that territory um giant for day also sports their worst covers cover and um Gentle Giant had some incredible covers and they had some terrible covers. Uh, this is definitely the worst, which featured a mask that you could cut out and put on your face and you could be a giant for a day. Of course, um, if you were to do so, you would destroy the album that you've just bought, which I don't know is a sort of a back backhanded sort of um, reference from the band to the album. Um, they themselves don't like this album very really much. Gentle Giant's catalogue is astonishing. This is a stinker. It's a pretty bad album, <laughs> right? Um, so that's what I've got at number 10. At number nine, we have Missing Peace. Um, this is a pretty bad album as well. It's nowhere near as bad as Drive for the Day because it's rescued from a couple of tunes, mainly Kerry Minier, who's the keyboard player. There's a couple of tunes on side two that are, that are very good Gentle Giant tunes. Again, they're trying to search for a commercial sound. It's not quite the punky rock sound of Giant for a Day, but it's pretty close to that. Um, this is the point where they had moved label, and as they moved to, I think, Chrysalis, I think that label was um, putting pressure on them to be more commercial, and this was their answer, and it should never have happened. They should have been just allowed to go the way they want. So again, Missing Peace is another album that is not as bad as Jark for Day. 
It has interesting moments in it. If you are a hardcore gentle giant fan and you haven't got a haven't got this album, it's well worth getting. So that's what I have at number nine. At number eight, I have Civilian, which is their last album from 1980. I actually think this is a very strong album and it ushers in a new sound um, which sort of is going to predate what progressive bands like Rush are doing. Um, it is a, a successful condensation of progressive ideas into a, a more concise pop format. I think they're beginning to nail it, but the trouble is the album wasn't a success. If this album had been a success, we might have seen a renaissance in Gentle Giant and they would have joined the ranks alongside Genesis and Rush and Asia of... of taking prog into the 1980s successfully it didn't sell well and i think at that point they gave up and they all go on to do other things but civilian actually is a pretty successful album and um is, is interesting in its more successful attempt to pull down the ideas of gentle giant into a more concise setting um it's a it's a good album but these three albums um Giant for a Day, Missing Peace, and um, Civilian. These albums are the not so good albums. This is not um, the masterpiece, Gentle Giant. From now on, right, for these other seven albums that we're going to discuss, these are all, in my opinion, prog masterpieces. They are all absolutely brilliant. If these albums had been made by anybody else, any other prog band at that time, and we'd be discussing them as being one of their greatest albums. And it's really hard to differentiate. So from now on, if you are a Gentle Giant fan and you want to explore their catalogue, these are the albums you're going to work with. And I'm going to try and steer you through that. And I don't want to take, I, I don't want to spend hours doing this. I want this video to be quite short so we can just get through it and you can watch it and see a sort of follow up to the video I did with Steve. So. Uh, um, number seven, I have the debut, which is called Gentle Giant, of course. Um, it came out in 1970. Um, in 1970, Prague ha hadn't quite got its act together. In the Court of the Crimson King comes out in 1969, and a lot of the bands that are playing with progressive ideas, they have to suddenly deal with that. They look around and go, oh my God, what have they done? Actually, Gentle Giant, I think, is formed in 1970 out of... Um, they were originally a band called Simon Dupree. They were a pop band. They had a hit record with a, a tune called Kites. And they formed Gentle Giant with their own agenda to push rock music to the limits. Uh, so they're already bought into this idea of being a progressive rock band right from the start. And that comes from themselves. I don't think they're... they're obviously, they're influenced by bands like King Crimson, Soft Machine, and Frank Zappa. Obviously, that influence is there. But they've got an agenda... And on that first album, they set it out. So when you go to that first album, compared with other progressive rock albums from 1970, it's it's ahead of the game. They really are ahead. The only thing in terms of Gentle Giant's oeuvre is that um, they haven't quite consolidated the Gentle Giant sound. So the Gentle Giant is this sort of, um, it's very funky, um, it's also has sort of medieval and modern classical overtones. The parts interlock in a way which is absolutely unique to them. Often melodies are shared across the um, structure of the song. They're multi-instrumentalists, so there's a wide colour of sound. And they will jump from a full rock band into maybe an a cappella piece and then into, say, something like a violin and recorder piece. All these things are the things we associate with Gentle Giant. When you listen to the first Gentle Giant album, it's there and it is monumental, but it still hasn't coalesced precisely. So this is why I put it at the bottom of the list. In terms of an, if you're a progressive rock cat fan, in terms of albums that you should own, this is like almost an essential purchase because it really, as is important as in the Court of the Crimson King or Atom Heart Mother or the Yes album in birthing this incredible genre so that's what i've got at number seven is the debut album gentle giant at number six i have the last album before the quality dropped which i think is from 1977 if i'm right 76 77 and it's an album called interview um, as time has gone on it's i have realized that interview is an absolute masterpiece it sometimes gets forgotten it 
it actually has some of their densest compositions, some of their most complex um, compositions and techniques and approaches because this is the most developed album. Before they decided to change their sound and go down the sort of commercial route, this is the album where Gentle Giant are at their most accomplished and they pull off some incredible stuff. This is an essential album. All these albums from now on are essential. Um, my favourite track on, in, on this album is I Lost My Head, which is the final track, Kerry Minier composition. And it just is such a beautiful tune, such a beautiful melody. It's hummable, it's singable, and it's also so heavy, and it's that medieval um, sort of jester-like English folk sound that they are just absolutely brilliant at. Interview is a forgotten classic, an absolute masterpiece. I've gone back to it for this video again, and um, I was, I, I have, I've actually put it above the debut, it's below the debut, and I listen, but no, this is absolutely incredible. So, at number five, I have their second album, Acquiring the Taste. Acquiring a Taste is where the Gentle Giant sound is consolidated. They've half got it on the first album, on the second album, they nail it um, incredibly. It's also probably their most extremely experimental and avant-garde album. This is a band going, right, how far can we push it? We're not going to worry about the audience. How far can we go? The opening track, Pantacles Nativity, is an absolute masterpiece. This is heavy stuff. Um, this is where they are taking ideas to their logical ends. And so actually it's quite sprawling because Gentle Giant, for all their avant-garde experimentation and complexity, are, are always concise, right? And they get to that point pretty quickly. They're ahead of the game. Um, but on um, acquiring the taste, this is where they're just letting it all hang out and seeing what happens, okay? And so um, the follow-up the follow -up album to this is Three Friends, which is a conceptual album. Um, and there you see them pulling the, these ideas into a conceptual framework. And then on the following album, Octopus, they almost drop this idea of the concept album, or they change the idea of the concept album, which is really interesting because they're sort of ahead of the game again in terms of progressive rock, but we'll get there. So, uh, yes, at number um, five, I have Acquiring the Taste, the second album. At number four, I have the album that brought me to Gentle Giant, the first one I heard, the one that blew me away. I've always said this is my favourite album by Gentle Giant in studying their music for these videos and really trying to get my head around that's now changed. But um, uh, at number five, I have Freehand, which came out, I think, in 76. It's one of the later albums. It's the one before Interview. Again, they are at the top of their game. They know totally what they're doing on Freehand. They pull it in a little bit. It's very funky, almost jazz fusion at certain points. They do all the stuff. I think Freehand and Interview are two absolutely monumental albums that represent sort of later stage progressive rock gentle giant. Absolute essential purchase. Well, I mean, what can I say? All I'm, This is why this video is going to be short. I'm going to say every album's amazing. Right, and that's the bottom line. So um, that's what I've got at number four is Freehand. At number three, I have Three Friends. Three Friends is a favourite amongst many Gentle Giant fans. It's a concept album that sort of follows the lives of three people who went to school together and then I think one leaves and one becomes like an artist and one becomes like an architect. I can't quite remember um, how that goes. Um, the track School Days which is the second track on there. I can remember when I first heard this, because um, I think Three Friends was the second album I heard by Gentle Giant. When I heard that track, I realised this was a band of utter genius because they weren't writing proggy material to be overblown and over the top and impress everybody with their incredible virtuosity and their in incredible intellects. What they're trying to do with that is paint the picture of going to school. And they do. You feel like you're at school. For all the virtuosity there, it really just paints a picture of going to school. And on this album, they paint pictures. And there's an actual track on there that deals with painting pictures. This is a true concept album. Um, so if you look at the sort of trajectory of Gentle Giant, we've got the, the debut album where they sort of decide to let's see how far we can push it out as what's this new sound. 
then acquiring the taste where they all let it go experimental and they they start to see all this wonderful stuff they can do as a band and you really hear the gentle giant sound coalesce and then on this third album three friends they pull it down into a conceptual framework and this is one of the great concept albums and it really works um, and the story pulls everything together in such a unique way that anybody that listens to that album understands the points it's making and it understands the point the type of characters that have to exist together the different personalities me as a teacher i have dealt with this all my life that there's different types of people and their requirements are different there's the scientist there's the artist there's the technologist there's these different types of people and that's what they deal with on that album now i think going forward um there, there's conceptual ideas that pull these albums together but one of the great innovations of Gentle Giant which I think nobody ever discusses and I can hopefully discuss it now on this video and hopefully um, there will be something unique that you get from it I think with three friends they realise the limitation of the concept album uh, this album I think is 72 uh, could be 73, but it's it's at the point where all the other prog bands are going, oh my God, look what we can do, close to the edge, tells from topographic oceans. And Gentle Giant are actually putting the brakes on and going, hang on, is this really where we want to go? Or do we want to make concise songs? So how do you pull uh, that together on an album? And I think they changed the idea of the concept album. And I think from Gentle Giant, we get a different idea of a concept album. And on the following album, which I assume is because we, we, we're down to the final um, two now. So at number two, I have Octopus. On Octopus, right, which is usually everybody's favourite, um, Roger, um, Roger Dean, uh, usually everyone's favourite Gentle Giant album, which I think just nudges past the post of all these masterpieces because of um, the... Uh, Right, it's not worked. <laughs> Do I keep going at this point? I've missed off Power and the Glory. And it's one of their greatest albums. Many people would say Power and the Glory is their greatest album. This always happens on my videos. I'm sat here thinking, do I stop? Or do I keep going at this point? Um, when I do these lists, I try not to sit with like a list of the discography in front of me. I try and pull it from my knowledge. You're com you've come to these videos to sort of access my knowledge of the band, of years and years of listening to these bands. In, in the case of Gentle Giant, I discovered Gentle Giant much later in life. And so I haven't got that instantaneous knowledge that if it was Yes or Genesis or Jethro till I could start trotting through the albums. Um, Power of Glory is an absolute masterpiece. Um, I think it's one of their greatest albums. And so I think subconsciously I've realised that it needs to go here. So there's not 10 albums, there's 11 albums. And Power of Glory needs to go at number three. <laughs> I think, for me, Octopus... Edge is just above Power and the Glory. What you're watching now is me working out right in front of you this order. I, I, I don't think anyone else would do this, so um, I might stop this video and start again. But what you're going to get, a big rehearsed. I've said it all, right? So I'm not. I'm going to keep going. I'm keeping going on this video. So I'm going to start, so you don't get confused, I'm going to go through my ranking again. So at number 10, I have the awful giant for the day giant for a day uh, no sorry a number 11 oh this is getting very confusing now what am i going to do you, you you're just watching incompetence it's it's just incompetence you're watching <laughs> i i i have a rule that we switch the camera on i've got to keep going you've i've got to record this you know this has happened before this has happened before and i did my um i think i did 20 greatest progressive rock bands and i missed off ELP and when I got to the end I sort of on video realized I'd missed off ELP why have I missed off power of the glory for I tell you what, it's a, it's a work of genius but for me in this story right 
I, I see it as just being one of the other masterpiece albums. There's a character to the other albums on here that Power and Glory doesn't quite have, right? That's what it, it's a work of genius and something like Cogs in Cogs is like, it's just definitive Gentle Giant. This is a masterpiece. It's just a masterpiece that doesn't quite have the character of Octopus, right? So I hope what you've watched is, is, is um, a middle-aged man having, almost having a nervous breakdown trying to work this out in front of you. But hopefully you've seen something real. You've seen something actually happening. Not somebody rehearsing something and trotting out the same old cliches. I'm leaving this in. Right, whatever happens, there. see, see the reason I don't want it to be in the po is is my perfectionism. It's me wanting to appear like I know what I'm doing. I want to appear like um, I've got this sort of um, godlike knowledge, but I haven't. Right, <laughs> we are all flawed, and I'm as flawed as you. Right, and I think there's something interesting in showing that. Right, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm well, I have kept going. I've, oh no, so I am going to now. Recap. Oh, this is a mess. I'm going to recap on the 11 Gentle Giants albums. I'm just going to rank them and see where we've got. So at number 11, we have The Awful Giant for a Day. At number 10, we have The Pretty Awful Missing Piece, but it's got some nice little moments on. We have at number 9, The Pretty Good Civilian but not representative of the Gentle Giant sound, more representative of a sort of 80s progressive rock sound, which at the time didn't work and it, it knackered the band up, so they packed it in, right? That's what civilian is, right? Um, at number nine, we have the debut, Gentle Giant. Masterpiece album, probably their most innovative album in terms of progressive rock, um, but not fully full of this generic sound of Gentle Giant. It doesn't represent them fully. So you wouldn't go out and buy that and say, I wonder what Gentle Giant sound like. Listen to the debut album. Go, oh, that's what they sound like. No, you haven't got it if you listen to that album. You have to listen to another album. At number seven, I have Interview. Probably their last great progressive rock album and an absolute masterpiece. Some of the densest material, some of the most complex stuff on there. Some And, and them, at their probably their most accomplished in the thing that they do right at number six i have acquiring a taste the second album when they stretched out and got all experimental and discovered their sound and here we we see the beginning of the true gentle giant sound uh, but a sprawling version of that at number um five so i haven't got the numbers right now so i'm having to do maths i'm having to add one to each number, which is which is is stressing me out. So at number um, five, I have Freehand, which again is with the interviews, those later period albums, really dense, really virtuoso, but really funky, and elements of jazz fusion, um, and the album that I discovered. So I do really love this album. So it's come up pretty high on there. I I, I would say it's 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 probably no better than Interview, but it has a special place in my heart, right? At number four, I have three friends, their third album and their great conceptual album, right? At number three, I have Power and the Glory, an absolute utter masterpiece. Some would say is Gentle Giant at their absolute best. But what you have seen is me forget about that album on the list. It's a concept album about power, right? But it's really just a collection of songs. This is, this, I think, is the great innovation that we, we see with Gentle Giant on these the um, fourth, fifth and sixth albums is a way of having the, an idea that goes across the whole album, but it's, it's a much more vaguer idea that just pulls together some songs that can almost have their own life. OK, and on Power and the Glory, this is a, it's an absolute masterpiece uh, of an album. Uh, Pro Proclamation is one of my favourite um, Gentle Giant tracks and, and possibly their definitive tune. Um, Proclamation was the tune picked by um, the fans when they recreated their sound which on a video which also features members of Gentle Giant. This happened a few years ago. I think it happened in the lockdown, didn't it? Absolute masterpiece. The greatest lockdown video of all time. 
So that's what I've got at number um, three is power and the glory. And you have seen the machinations in front of you to get to that point. And I think I'm right. That's where it, it should go. So at number two, I, I have Octopus. And for me, Octopus is where the band basically gets John Weathers on drums. Up to then, they're absolutely incredible. And the drumming on Three Friends by Malcolm Mortimer is sublime. It's brilliant. But John Weathers brings that final missing piece sorry to use that name here in context of the fact they live now because that he's the missing piece and his straight down the line funk grooves that just pull the whole thing together acts as an anchor within all this madness octopus is um is not a concept album but it is built around the concept that it's eight tunes eight opuses oct meaning eight oct opuses it's eight tunes now why is that a concept? Because at that time, every other prog band is going the opposite way. And what Gentle Giant do is they say, we're not going to do an album with a sideline and an epic and then two mini epics on side two. We're not going to do that. We are going to go back to that idea of having four songs on side one, four songs on side two. These are concise pop-like songs, but in there they pack it enough for each to be in a mini epic Right, I play in a prog band, Rain, and we've just done a second album called um, Radio Silence. And I have taken the same approach in some of the compositions, or we have, but a lot of the compositions that I originated, I wanted to pack in an epic amount of stuff into six or seven minutes, and that really comes directly from Gentle Giant. And I think that's their great innovation within prog. They're heavier, more way out, more avant-garde, more virtuoso, more brilliant in their composition than most progressive rock bands. But the thing that makes them different in the end is that they don't write epics, all right? And I think that's why Octopus is so important. And then you stick the Roger Dean cover on the front and you've got a work of absolute sublime genius right across the whole package, okay? Unlike Acquiring the Taste, which I think has one of the most horrendous bad taste covers in rock history. Go and have a look at it. It's awful. And I cannot believe they thought that that was a good idea at the time. <laughs> Stick a Roger Dean cover on Acquiring the Taste. Uh, right up my ranking it would go. So what have I got at number one? Uh, number one I have In a Glass House. It's taken me many years to arrive at the point of thinking that's their greatest album and now I need to come up for an argument of why I think it is their greatest album and it goes like this. Um, we have a run of incredible albums. They are at their peak. They all could be put forward as being that. In a Glass House, I think the structure of that album is what just edges it over for me. It's the same structure as the Yes album. We don't get an epic, but we get a, 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 a sizable track coming just under the 10 minute mark. And then we get a very small two minute track, usually ethereal, and then we get an epic. And then you turn onto side two and we get the same thing again. Great big epic, little track, and an epic. And for me, that slight epicness that we get, this is where you really hear Gentle Giants stretching out. So for me, it's almost like their most proggy album. Um, they're at the peak of their game. This is the album where the brothers, those three brothers, um, Ray, Phil, and... <laughs> God. Oh, I knew this was going to happen. You're going to see another car crash. What's the... Th you got Ray Shulman, Phil Shulman. I want to say Derek Shulman. It is Derek Shulman. I'm not going to look it up. I'll go with that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um... And I think it's, it's, um, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, this has gone wrong again. I am struggling through here. But anyway, one of the brothers leaves, okay? The album doesn't get a release in, the, in America, in the US, because it's two way out. And this is sort of hobbled this album. But they seem to, I don't know where that just gets them to pull their ideas. On tracks like Experience and the title track, for me, that's Gentle Giant at their best. And I think... If I just had one track by Gentle Giant that I was going to live with forever that does everything I love about Gentle Giant, it would be experience off in a glass house. All right, so, um, God, we've struggled through this video best I can. Um, for those anal retentive prog fans that can't take the fact that shouting at me again, how can you not know 
Which brother left? In Gentle Giant, there, 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 and all that bit, which I know I'm going to get. Um, it's quite, it's quite weird doing these videos. Um, you can just blank out. This has happened to me a number of times. Um, so I'm going to just go to Wikipedia. He should know this. If he knows his stuff, he shouldn't be making videos like this if he doesn't know this. He should he just should know it's off the top of his head. Right? I've doubted myself, you know. So um it's a, it's Phil Shulman. Who the hell's Derek Shulman then? Where have I got Derek Shulman from? Cause that's the lead singer, so we've got Ray Shulman, Derek Shulman, and Phil Shulman. Oh, all these brothers, I get confused. So who did I say? I had came up with another Shulman. Did I come up with another Shulman? Right, this is why I did not want to do the Gentle Giant video. All right? I love the band, they're one of my favorite bands. Bands that I grew up listening to when I was a teenager, that stuff's part of my DNA. Gentle Giant isn't, I'm not sure. When I go into their world, I get confused. There's a lot going on, and I'm sure there's people watching this that are absolute gentle giant nuts. I've only been listening to them for about 15, 20 years. <laughs> so I think I've had enough time, you know, and I've listened to every single album 100 times. But because it's not in my DNA, because it's not from those teenagers, I get confused on certain details and facts. If I was going through another progressive rock band, I would know all the years. Um, but the, the album's pretty much come out by the year. So you can sort of see the debut album, Gentle Giants, 1970. Um, and then you get to Cry and Taste, 71. Three Friends, 72. Uh, I think um, Octopus is 73 and Glass House is 73. Paraglory, 74. And then, then we have Freehand, 75. Interview, 76. Missing Peace, 77. Uh, 78 giant for a day and then 79 80 we've we've got civilian uh, so that's how I have it in my mind of the, the band tracking out so it is in there but it's not instantly accessible so I do apologize about that but when you watch one of my videos you get it raw you get me thinking through it right all right I've got to the end of this video uh, it's going up I don't care it's going up right I would be such a hypocrite to scrub this and then have a second run of it and get it all perfect. I'm sure somebody else would do that. I don't believe that's what we need now, creatively. I really don't. And that's probably what my next video is going to be about. Why I'm happy to leave these mistakes in. Um, so if you like the mistakes, if you like see, seeing this stuff happening front of your eyes please put it in the comments if you don't like it sling your hook go watch somebody else some prog nerd that's got it all in their head because they've got some sort of anal retentive mindset and they have to have all the details and they've written it all down on a piece of paper and they've got it on oh, that's what i dislike about prog rock that's the thing i don't like about it i didn't get into prog rock because i wanted to create lists and have everything in order right but here I am doing top 10 videos. God, this is like therapy. This one's been about therapy, which is interesting because Gentle Giant have that psychological approach in their music. They're very interested in the psycho psychologist R.D. Lang. And R.D. Lang, is, he was very much about, he, he questioned what was a mental illness. And he really saw that as being society's framework. So if you didn't act within the in that framework correctly, you would get labelled mentally ill. It's a really interesting approach to psychology. And so as I as you just free associate like I am now, as I question myself as whether I'm doing the right thing on YouTube in 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 talking like this to camera. In, in taking a subject like Gentle Giant, the truth is, you know what I'm really doing wrong here? The thing I'm doing wrong here, and I'm realizing as I'm talking to you now, it's, it's the fact that I'm trying to jump through the hoops of ranking these videos. You're here to rank the videos, but that's not really why you're here. You're here because you love Gentle Giant. And there's something sublime and esoteric about Gentle Giant. 
And that's the thing you want me to talk about. But I don't talk about it. I Instead, I just sit there ranking and saying, I like this one worse and I like this one best. And that's absolutely pointless. What you want is something in there. Facts are nice, but you can go on Wikipedia and look up facts. I've just done that before you. What does that really mean? Right, what does it mean me getting the names of the band right or wrong? Okay, what the question is fundamentally is why do we like Gentle Giant and why do we find them fascinating? What is it about them that, that we find fascinating? And I think when you look at tracks like Knots and you look at tracks like Cogs in Cogs, I think they describe a certain existentialist psychological state. I think that's really fundamentally what Gentle Giant are about. They're trying to get inside the mind. They want to show you how the mind works and the facets and the machine-like aspects of our psych psyche. That's what I think. Now, I could spend a whole video exploring that, but I'm not, I'm gonna finish. But hopefully at the end, with me looking at myself and confronting this sort of existentialist terror, of just switching the camera on and talking and seeing where do I go and what's it about and why are these things happening and do I fight against it or do I go with it and when I go with it where does it take me okay and as I say that then little light bulb moments come off and go actually gentle giant deal with this they deal with this on their arms over and over again okay and when I heard these interlocking like tracks like knots and cogs and all this this and the, and the lyrical matter, I lost my head. It, it, to me, there seems to be an underpinning theme of psychology and of existential angst. That's what Gentle Giant have. And, and they express that in a way which is very esoteric, but within the rock and roll milieu. So they occupy, they're like an esoteric rock band, right? They're there. There's, there's certain bands that are like that. Cardiacs are like that. Gong are like that for me. Frank Zappa's like that to a great extent. And Gentle Giant. Those bands are like esoteric rock bands that expose deep, sublime truths within the nature of rock and roll, but without outside of the commercial boundaries of rock and roll. I think that's what makes Gentle Giant great. Now, if you stay to the end, I hope that was worth it. And I hope I redeemed the fact that I cannot always pull out of this old brain of mine information instantly all the time. And it does go wrong. Our brains do go wrong. There are knots in there within the cogs, within the cogs, within the cogs. I think I've got to the end of the video. I think I've arrived at a point where I'm happy with what I've said. I'm going to go now. If you liked the video, liked it like it if you uh, want to know more subscribe and ring the notification bell if you really want to go deeply into this then become a patreon and come and tell me because you can talk to me directly there and tell me like my patrons do what are you interested in and i will go into these areas the deep areas of deep psychologic psychology and esoteric truth right the we need to move from the outer temple to the inner temple you know, is that the oily way? I'm on another band now. They need to be talked about as well. I'm going. Just shut up, Andy. Get Just press that off video. Press the button. Press the button now. Just, or you're going to keep going. Just keep press, press it now.